Well, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be baking for you some cat head biscuits. This recipe was sent to us by one of our customers. It means my oven is ready for these biscuits. By one of our customers, and she said that she had worked on this for a while and she really thought this was one of the best biscuit recipes that she had ever eaten. You can also find this recipe on our website. And I'm going to read her ingredients to you. She has one cup of Damata flour. Again, you'll note that I'm just going to scoop the flour into the cup. We don't just reach in and with your cup because you're going to get too much flour. You just want to fill it up to the top. You're going to take a knife, smooth it out, okay? And then we have a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a third teaspoon of baking soda in our little glass right here. And it calls also for a quarter cup of butter, third cup almond milk, three quarter teaspoon of cider vinegar. Now I will tell you that you can exchange the almond milk for buttermilk if you do not have a intolerance to lactose. And this is made for people who are lactose intolerant. Our flour is not only wheat free, gluten free, it is casein free, which is the protein that you will find in milk products. And so we've chosen to go with a completely lactose ingredients today. And that's, and you would omit the cider vinegar if you are going to use buttermilk. So we have the cider vinegar, the almond milk, and an egg. And it calls for us to preheat our oven first to 450 degrees. The key to getting a nice popped biscuit is that you want your oven hot enough. So start out with a 450 degree oven. And then our mixing bowl, we're going to combine our flour. And I use a paddle. I'm not using, you'll notice here that I'm using a paddle, not a bit. I'm going to combine my flour. my other dry ingredients. And I'm just going to kind of mix those up lightly just so they kind of get blended. And then here's a trick that I have learned over the years when you're using ice cold butter. You want to use a grater to grate that in to your flour. The next step is you're supposed to Grate this into your flour, which I'm going to turn this off for that right now, and it's a half a stick of butter. Do it different way. Okay, we have our butter grated, and this makes it really easy to put into your batter and, and mix it all up when you grate it like this. And you're just going to mix it until, until you have. Um, There are no large balls, you know, that you're making. You're just going to be almost like a cornmeal. In the meantime, I'm going to pour my vinegar into my um, almond milk. I'm going to beat one egg. One thing I use when I'm using butter is I don't, never use a salted butter because my recipe art usually calls for salt. So I don't add extra salt to my recipe by using unsalted butter. Now we're going to um, stir these into the dry ingredients. This recipe will be a little sticky when you, get, when you start pulling it out. You want to put a little flour on your hands, a little pot of flour. Pull it out and then I always put it right inside of here. I'm gonna, it has flour on it. It's a, another way to, rather than putting flour on the top of your counter, you just put it in here. Okay, here's our batter. As you can see, it looks sticky. So the important thing is you wanna get a little bit of flour in here and work it into a nice little ball. So I'm gonna take a little bit of flour and sprinkle it in here. Put some on my hands. Make a little bit more, it looks like it needs. See, just kind of got the top covered here. I'm going to kind of work that into it. Don't be afraid to add some more flour that's sticking to your hands. Another thing I'll do if something's sticking to my hands, I might put a little, uh, 
you know, um, spray on it, an oil spray. That helps to not have it so sticky also. Flour. There we go. You see it's coming into a nice little ball here. You're just going to need it a few times. You're not going to work, keep working at it. We got a nice little ball going here. Put it right inside the um, plastic. And pat it down a little bit. A little more flour. We're going to just take my little roller here. And just kind of roll it out. You don't want to get them get it too flat because you want the. There's only going to make you like four biscuits. They're called a cat head biscuit for a specific reason. It's supposed to get pretty fat, but I think I might have already run mine too. So, here's, here's my one more time to make my fourth biscuit. That's probably how thick we wanted them all. That's okay. Just make us one more biscuit here. See if we can get five out of that. My oven has a few seconds to go on reaching that 450, so I'm going to wait a minute until it is ready, and then we'll pop those in the oven. Okay, now I'm, my oven has reached 450 degrees. I'm going to put these in and bake them off for 18 minutes or until they're golden brown. I do want to make a note here that more than likely, the size of your cat head biscuits, you want it this size here, a little more thickness to it. I had cut these rather thin. We have quite a group in the house today, and I was trying to make a biscuit for everyone. But about this size here is what you're looking for, and the thickness that you're looking for in these cat head biscuits. Okay, we're just going to pop them in the oven. Oh my, look at these. Would you look at that? These are called cat head biscuits. So well, I'll tell you one thing that I did. As I said, put them in for 18 minutes, but at 11 minutes, I was really looking at them. Being done. Hold on one second. I had a plate and it's gone. Wait, here we are. It got moved on. I want you to see what they're looking like. Look at these. Aren't those beautiful? Remember the one I told you? Make a little bit thicker? Well, here it is. I'm going to open that up. We're going to put some butter on it. Would you look at that? Give you a little secret here. This is the first time I have ever made these biscuits. Ed's my baker, and he's the one who's usually doing all the baking. Now, this is the first attempt for me. So don't tell me that you can't make gluten-free biscuits at home. I know that you can. When you're using DeModel Living Flour, you're not going to have a failed recipe. You're going to be eating dinner with your family. And I want to tell you something. These biscuits are Larapin good. <laughs>